The offering is a most exciting time for us. It's a time for us to cast, in a sense, we cast our cares on the Lord as well in the offering, saying, in this crazy world that we're living in, God, you are my source. God, you are my provider. You are uh, my protector. And in you, I will trust. So uh, thank you so much for your continued support, House of Destiny. We love to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And with this uh, beautiful platform that God has given to us, Kim and Jane have labored. Uh, decades for we're able to reach around the world and you have a giant part in that and you have a reward in that as well so thank you for your sowing we're believing God with you we're going to pray at the end for supernatural increase in your life Christine wrote in and she said one of my biggest regrets is I knew nothing about Kim until he had passed away I saw his name in a tweet several months ago and I looked him up. I think I have watched all of his videos now, but keep watching some of them again and again. Thanks for continuing and a special thanks for the Israel updates. God bless your whole family, Christine. Speaking of Israel updates, thank you, Christine, number one. Number two, uh, thank you for reaching out and sowing to the House of Destiny as well regarding the nation of Israel. We have a special uh, boots on the ground and a special program for blessing the people of Israel. And we've been doing that for many, many years. So thank you for participating in that. Now, let's believe God together. In the midst of this chaotic world, there is an order for us in God. And there is a blessing for us in God. So Lord, I thank you for blessing your people. I thank you for strengthening them and encouraging their hearts wherever they are, whatever they're doing and ministering specifically, Lord, to their peculiar needs. You know exactly what each needs and you are our full supply. And we give you thanks for it now. And we're excited about our future and praise you for it in Jesus name. And everybody said, so be it. Welcome everybody at the House of Destiny to our special Saturday broadcast. Now, you know, I realized today it's been a really long time since I just sat down and talked to you alone. You, you know, I've been with mom and Christy and Doobie and Fa and everybody, you know, so much has been going on that I, I haven't actually just spoken to you in a very long time. And that's including over Facebook. And um, God told me to speak to you today. And so I'm going to, and I'm gonna to talk to you about, well, a few things, but specifically I'd like to address depression, uh, disappointment, uh, which a lot of people have been feeling. And um, uh, you know, there's a spiritual side to that and a spiritual way of dealing with that. And as Christians, we have to know how to handle those things and, and recognize things on a spiritual level because everything around us has been so carnal and it's becoming more and more and more so in the world around us. Everything's so deceptive that, um, you know, a lot of a lot of us have, have gone through different levels of, of depression or disappointment, not understanding. Um, but many of you do understand, and I hear from you all the time, I read all your emails. Many of you do understand that, uh, you know, God does things in His time for His purpose. And, uh, you know, many of us have found ourselves in a difficult season right now. Uh, and who's to be surprised with the year we had in 2020? 2020 was the year that at the beginning of the year, God told me one word and it was victory. My perception of victory was not what happened. Um, and I think a lot of us uh, uh, would agree. But if you go back and you, and you look at uh, what God was saying through my dad, and you know, I often am the person who's coming to you with, this is what my dad prophesied, because that's where my my focus is right now. And so, 
we'll have our biblical discussions and we'll have our current events. But when I come to you, it's usually I've, I'm looking at what dad's prophes prophesied and how the things are coming to pass and when is the right season. And that is the most important thing too, is the season that we are in and being able to recognize that season and, and know what we're meant to do during that time. And, um, you know, there are so, so many uh, biblical figures that come to mind uh, when I think of that. I mean, Daniel in exile. Um, uh, things did not look good for Daniel, but because he was resilient, because he continued and kept his faith, knowing that deeper thing that we do know when we become born again, when we become Christians, it's an eye-opening experience to realize what is actually going on in this world. And, um, uh, you know, I think about those biblical figures and it is inspiring to me, as I'm sure it is to you. And um, it reminds me also that, again, we expect things to happen in a certain way in a certain time, and then when they don't, it's very disappointing. And uh, one thing that my dad always did was uh, encourage us to not allow ourselves to become encompassed by our current circumstances, and rather to remember the promises that God's given us. That's why we have prophecy, because he's, well, of course, he's not gonna tell us the whole story because we have to learn through that process and grow through that process and overcome. And so when I come to you as I am today and say, I want to speak to you about depression, I actually can from experience talk to you about that because of what me and my family went through in losing my dad. So there was a loss and um, it was a great loss. Many of you felt that loss. Many of you who had been with us for 20, 30 or more years um, uh, grieved as we did and with us. And um, I don't think we would have been able to get through it without you. And so um, I find myself seeing so many people as we look at the world around us, things were looking hopeful and were, you know, we were seeing just so much happen. And it was, it, was, it was uplifting and it made us feel empowered. And uh, at the same time, we found ourselves in a, a very divisive and messy situation, which we don't want. And that's not what God wants. And so in the season we're in now, it's very important not to allow ourselves to become uh, depressed or downtrodden or feel you know, oh, I don't know what's going to happen, I'm afraid, and now I thought I had figured it out, and, and now I haven't. Well, when God puts you in those situations, it's because He's needing you to have faith in Him. He actually needs you to relinquish the control and give it to Him. And this is a conversation I actually had with uh, Greg Wark recently um, about, um, because me as a person, I am a, uh, I'm a caretaker, I, I take care of people, I try to, you know, just in my own life, in my own home. And so my instinct when I see a problem is to try to solve it. And what I've run into in my life is, is realizing that there are many things and many times where you have to be able to let it go and give it to God. And to be able to discern when the time to do that is, can be difficult, especially with your own self. Um, but having that conversation with Greg Work helped me in my, in my own self to say, I am going to let go and give this to God and have faith in Him, that in the end, what He promised, He will fulfill. And so um, that's the first thing I just wanted to, to take the opportunity to speak to you about today because I haven't, I haven't spoken, again, individually like this, just one-on-one -on -one or one-on however many of you are watching in so long. Um, I used to really enjoy doing the Facebook Lives. And last year, God started to tell me to stop and I couldn't understand why. Um, and I, I, I resisted it a little bit and I did sort of fade away uh, because I wasn't sure, is this God telling me this or am I just getting frustrated with social media? Um, but it definitely was God um, in the time. And many would say, well, you need to stay there and you need to be there. Um, 
uh, in the uh, where the enemy is and understand what's going on because yes, Facebook has become the enemy. Big t tech is becoming the enemy. Um, uh, so much potential for good and evil is in everything and everyone, and that's something that more and more people are starting to wake up to. And I feel that this season we're in is a necessary season so that enough people can see what is being exposed and and the things that are being exposed across the world right now uh, are shocking and uh, the ability for us to communicate the way we is we, I mean sorry the way we can uh, with the technology that we have enables us to see so much more but it also enables great deception uh, I don't know if many of you have heard of these deep fakes that they do where they can actually completely fake video of human beings talking uh, I saw one on Tom Cruise and Joe Rogan and they never were in those videos so it's a little frightening when you realize well how do I know if what I'm looking at is real or not because things can be manipulated on a screen um, these are uh, very deep deceptions that the Bible did warn us about. I mean, the Bible has, was very clear uh, uh, in, in, in warning us of these things that would be coming. And, and what, what God showed my dad was the exposure, the exposure, the exposure, so many times that I would actually have to make a list of dates for you of how many times he said it, how many times he prophesied it. Uh, also, death to debt. If you look at our financial situation right now, uh, I would say all over the world, but especially in America, um, this is not looking good. You know, if I, we were seeing great changes in the finances and, and great changes in technology. And um, it is a time of great change. We've seen so many uh, uh, great leaders in the body of Christ uh, um, uh, pass on, one after the other after the other, my own father being one of them. And we've seen the older generation going so a new generation can step into a situation that is completely new and it's happening so quickly and so rapidly that there is bound to be conflict there is bound to be struggle um, because there it, it always is when there's change but at the same time there is still hope and um, I was watching a, a documentary a, a few days ago it, it just popped up uh, and I just ended up well, it was the morning, I ended up watching it and I wept the whole morning. It was a documentary done in 1998 on Auschwitz survivors, um, Auschwitz-Birkenau survivors from uh, the Holocaust, but they were particularly from Hungary. And the lady being interviewed, the Jewish lady who survived, she was a child um, in, in Auschwitz. Her whole family was, was killed. And she survived, and she um, she was speaking about how things were prior to um, uh, the what Hitler did and what the, they did with the Third Reich. And I'm bringing this up because my father prophesied the rise of a Fourth Reich, and particularly sent me to uh, Poland. I have seen Auschwitz. I have been to Birkenau one and two. Um, I will never go there again. Uh, because I'm going once I think is important for everybody to see it but I could never go there again because of the the profound effect it had on me emotionally um, and spiritually because deep inside of myself I knew that there was a reason my dad would send me there he never did things like that for nothing he particularly sent me and I'm thinking about all of these things as I'm watching this lady speaking about her experiences and um, in going to the camp but more importantly it was what happened prior to and she spoke about how you know they knew about things that were going on obviously people didn't know the extent to which uh, what they were doing to the Jewish people and the Holocaust at the time a lot of regular people didn't know some people did but a lot of them didn't know the extent to which uh, this was happening and how just despicable it was and so where they were the Hungarian Jews uh, didn't end up actually going into the camps until the end at that point Hitler already knew he'd lost but he was still determined to kill all of the Jews and was gathering them from Hungary um, which is that I think I believe that region is now Ukraine uh, which is also interesting because there was my dad in Ukraine in 2014 during all of that 
Uh, and that's something I've been saying to the people who are watching Prophetic Rewind uh, every Monday, because I put out uh, footage of my dad every Monday on our uh, Prophetic Rewind channel. If you don't know about that, you should definitely look at that. Um, and uh, on, on Prophetic Rewind, um, um, and I've been very specifically putting things on Prophetic Rewind that are um, a uh, have to do with what's going on now. So it's not just random in there as well. So you really need to go and, and look at those. I put a lot of prophecy in there. Sometimes when my dad would prophesy, it wouldn't just be, thus says the Lord. Sometimes he would be in the middle of speaking and God would show him something. And so a lot of times in Prophetic Rewind, there are these beautiful little nuggets that sort of can help us pull through this. But going back to what I was watching the other day is, is, is that... Uh, in these particular Jewish people um, were not too worried because things hadn't really touched them and they felt like they didn't have too much to worry about. But slowly over time, uh, she said little laws would start to change. And at first it was easy and they were just compliant. Okay, that's true, it's fine. But then they'd been hearing that they, they were putting the Star of David on uh, uh, Jews in Germany. And when they started to put the Star on them is when they began to worry. And next thing they knew, they were just taken out of there. And um, what I found concerning is that you have a similar circumstance going on on a much larger scale right now, where certain laws are being changed for whatever different reasons. There might be good reasons, but the concern of the majority of Americans is uh, the freedoms that are are being taken via law. So that's a fear a lot of people have, and it's a genuine fear. And I watched that video of that lady um, uh, who survived Auschwitz, and uh, I sat there feeling like a little alarmed. And God really checked me and, and reminded me of all of the things, just through my own dad, that he promised, not even bringing it, and then you bring in the Bible. And uh, you, I mean, you know, we know, what is coming. We know we will suffer for suffer in His name. Um, we know, as we've seen what's just been going on in Israel over the past few weeks, um, how absurd uh, the mentality toward uh, the Jewish people in Israel has become. And um, to the point where they're being criticized uh, for defending themselves, essentially. And if you disagree with me, that's okay. Uh, you need to look into it yourself, though, because what's going on, I mean, even Bill Maher, I believe his name is, uh, that has that show, he's very uh, uh, far left, I'm not a fan, but I did catch a video of him that even he, um, who is more of a, the old school Democrat, he's not in that far left wing, even he was saying, this is absurd, you're, you're, you're asking a nation, not a country, not to defend themselves. Um, and of course their critique was while well, they're firing into to civilian areas. Well, Hamas was firing from some civilian areas. That's where the rockets were. And so that's a, that's a, a very cruel war tactic. Um, and so, first of all, I will make a firm statement today that we, this ministry and all of us stand with Israel 100%. But I do recall my father prophesying about a, a period of time that Israel would stand alone. She would stand alone for a season. Um, and I am inclined to believe that this is that period. And many of us are feeling alone uh, in that as well. I know many of you, because we've had lockdowns and we've had COVID, I mean, we've got uh, 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 global pandemics that may or may not be, uh, I mean, who knows the origins and there's that whole argument and I'm not even gonna get into that. But what I am going to say to you is that through all of this, we, have been put together. God brought you to my father, to this ministry, and my mother. And uh, we have, we are a remnant of prophetic people who have been spiritually trained for this. This is part of the, this is part of the prophetic and what my dad was doing that wasn't in a prophecy that says, thus says the Lord. It was in an act. And we actually now have this platform that as of now cannot be censored the way social media is. And um, just for 
your information for it, just so you know. I've taken myself personally off of the social media platforms because I, I find the, the environment to be toxic. And I become very distressed and angry and upset. At in, I'm seeing injustice and I'm seeing injustice represented in, incorrectly and then I'm not sure and I'm questioning myself. And those are good things to be thinking about. I mean, we should all think about those things and, and, and discuss them. Uh, but there is a spiritual element to this that is evil and demonic and it is on a scale that, is, that surpasses the United States of America. And uh, so this is the time not to allow ourselves to be depressed, not to allow the enemy to blind us uh, in a time when we need to be alert, we need to be watching. Uh, even now as I sit here, I have to be careful what I, what I say because this video is going to go on YouTube and they might censor us. At this point, I don't care. They can censor all they want. However, uh, we do live in that environment and that is difficult because now even in conversation, uh, uh, we find it difficult, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives. Are we going to get into an argument with someone politically over something? Are we going to call someone the wrong name? That's a very difficult way to live. And the only thing we can do right now, aside from pray, um, is give it to God. And I would say the same thing to people who are struggling with depression. I can speak particularly to depression that comes with the loss of lo a loved one. Um, I don't have a chemical imbalance. There are people who do have those problems, uh, who need medication and things like that. But what I'm talking about is more of a spiritual depression that's that is hanging over the people and um, you know I, it, you need to go and watch this past week's prophetic rewind again I know I keep bringing it up but it was so it, it, it was just this beautiful meeting of my dad in San Jose the reason it's important is not because of any specific prophecy but because of what was dealt with there spiritually that helped me and I thought I'm going to speak to everybody this week and I am going to share this because it's happening to me so it must be happening to some of you too and god's put us together here we are this remnant of prophetic warriors what are we going to do what are we going to do now one thing we are not going to do is allow the enemy to keep us depressed afraid we will not be manipulated by fear now not being manipulated by fear doesn't mean behaving stupidly uh, because you're untouched you're not untouchable but not allowing fear to dictate your life. And a lot of that is going on. And so there's not much we can do uh, as individuals, uh, even together, uh, on a carnal level. But on a spiritual level, we can. And, and today I just kept thinking about Joshua and the walls of Jericho and how my dad prophesied that Trump would be a trumpet. and. You know, when he said his name, the name Trump, that's the only time he said Trump and that he would be a trumpet. All the other prophecies he didn't actually say Trump except for one other time he said Donald. But Trump was a trumpet. He was a loud sounding, whether you liked him, I wasn't a fan of Donald Trump prior to the, the elections and all that. I thought it was insane that he was even running. Uh, I didn't take it seriously, nobody really did. And at the time, we didn't remember what my dad had prophesied about, uh, about Trump. Uh, but Trump was a trumpet, is still a trumpet sounding. And the reason I believe that, that to be is because he's an, he, he was an outsider. He was outside of a group of people who have become corrupted in leadership throughout our, our world. This is not just confined to the United States, obviously. And uh, luckily, you guys live all over the world. You're not just in the United States. And so you can speak to what's going on in your countries. And uh, I think regional uh, demonic powers uh, need to be focused on. And that's something else that I looked at uh, this past week on Prophetic Rewind is it wasn't always just what did Kim Clement prophesy? But where was he going? Because if you look, I read an article in, in Dearborn, Michigan um, yesterday, and I thought, Dearborn, Michigan, they're having trouble over there. 
Well, Portland, Oregon, they're having trouble over there. Seattle, Washington. These are places my dad frequented. He didn't just go once or here and there. Frequented um, these areas and was working prophetically in advance to prepare the region, especially the people of Christ there for what was coming. And even he couldn't see all of it. But his that prophetic act uh, uh, preserved and, and um, prepared uh, the people who are actually especially the pastors of those churches and, and the ministers and, and the Christians there who are in those regions right now dealing with a spiritual battle. And so um, this is something I just, I just needed to get out and just let you know how I'm feeling about it. But at the same time, I want to keep hearing from you because I've heard some incredible, I almost read an email today, but I'm going to wait till I'm with mom and Christy because uh, we, might, we might actually go through a couple of them that people have sent who have got spiritually, they have got, they are right on point. And um, that comes from years and years and years of my mom and dad's labor with you. And us, eventually us kids too, everybody. We have labored together in preparation for this moment for a very long time. And God has given us all of the tools that we need to, to stay connected, to be able to communicate with each other, to be able to pray with each other, to stand in agreement. And um, it's, it's uh, quite remarkable. And so essentially what I'm saying to you today is that we sit here together because of a prophetic act more than 10 years ago now, which was my mom and dad starting a network on the internet. And this has given us this place, this platform, so that we can speak freely. And no, we're not saying anything wrong or bad, but we live in, in, in a strange time. A time that my dad saw coming, but saw would be overcome. He saw, um, he saw that there would be Damascus Road conversions. And I, th I think that there's great depth to that prophecy. I think it's more than just one or two terrorists. I think that that we are sort of en masse being guided through a, a situation of being blinded by the light, which is Christ, which is truth. And truth is, I say it all the time, truth is hard to see. It's hard to accept. There's a lot of breaking down we have to do within ourselves when we have to face truth about our own selves alone, let alone all of this going on. And so, um, you know, without rambling on too much today, I just wanted to encourage you uh, not to allow depression or fear or disappointment to get you because this is not over. This is not over. God is working. We are in the middle of God working. And our job is to make sure that we are obedient, that we're doing what He wants us to do, that we recognize the right moment, the right time. Everything's beautiful in its time. What season we are in. And once we can understand that, it gives, our, gives us a much better perspective. And so as I sit here before you today, I don't feel afraid. I have my moments of being afraid. I did the other day when I watched the Holocaust thing. But I, I have my moments of being afraid, of being unsure. And Kim Clement was my dad. I should be the most, but no, I'm human. And I'm here with all of you in this. And um, we are in a time uh, of overcoming as we never have. We are in a time of things being revealed. And so although all of this is going on and it seems frightening, especially the deception and the division and all this and upsetting and it makes you angry. When I'm sitting here before you now, I feel hopeful. I feel joy, I feel excitement, I feel anticipation because I trust that God is going to take care of this and he's going to take care of us. And I have absolutely no doubt about that. And so um, in closing today, I actually asked if Pastor Fa could say a prayer for all of us, um, me included, um, to break the power of depression. Many people have had to deal with suicide in this past year um, uh, uh, and loss and death, that the power of that over your, over your life, over your mind, over, over your, your journey to your destiny, that in your pain and your suffering, that God can re relieve that and give you hope 
enjoy again. Because as a person who, for me personally and my brothers and sisters, losing our dad was an incredible loss, a huge trauma. And we didn't always show that to you, but we as a family have had to deal, and we're still dealing with the loss, that great loss. Um, but I can sit here before you today and tell you that not only am I not worried about uh, what happens after you die, because I already know, so I have no fear of that. Um, uh, I'm excited to do what God's called me to do. I'm excited to live in this time, in this moment now. And um, if we can get to that place, to be aware of, of, of the dangers, to be aware of the deceptions, to be, to be aware of who is the, the enemy working through, because there's a lot of that going on. Uh, we, can, we can make it through this. God put us together. He put us here together, here at the House of Destiny. And, and he knew, he knows the end from the beginning. He knew back then when my mom and dad had no idea what was coming. My dad had glimpses as a prophet, of course, but n not to this extent, of course. So uh, I find it remarkable and I find it beautiful that we're here together and that we can meet this way and we can, maybe we can't physically touch each other, but it doesn't matter. Our spirits are together and we, we stand in agreement on many, many prophecies uh, given from my dad throughout the Bible. We know it. And here we stand together at one of the most crucial times in human history. And I am honored to be standing with you. And so I wanted to take a chance to say, to say that to you today too. And uh, to ask you to forgive me for disappearing from social media because I used to go chat on there to a lot of you uh, on those Facebook Lives. Um, and at the right time, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do that again or figure out something else. Um, but as of now, I am being obedient and staying away from that kind of interaction for now. For some reason, God told me. He did not tell Christy, he did not tell Doobie. He told me. So I'm being obedient in that. Um, but I do love you. And I read your emails and your letters. And, and I, I, I cannot express to you how grateful we as a family are for the support that you've given us. And we are going to continue to be here to support you as well as we go through this together. And again, I'm honored to be on this journey with you. And I wanted to take the time to say that today. And um, now I would like to hand it over to Fa because Fa is gonna pray. And we're gonna pray to lift that spirit of depression that's been hanging over a lot of us and uncertainty. And uh, that we remember that uh, we have faith and God's got this. And sometimes we just have to let go and let God. So I love you and I'm gonna kick it to far now. Let's end in prayer. One of the beautiful songs that Kim wrote is, has the lyric or the title, you're never, never, never alone. You know, the devil wants us to feel isolated, but the truth of the matter is, we're not isolated. We might be isolated to a degree circumstantially, physically in this world, but spiritually, you are never at a distance from God. No matter what it is that we might be going through, He is just a prayer away, and He's right here living on the inside of our hearts. Don't allow we will not allow the devil to lie to you, to discourage you, and to feel like you're all alone because you are never, never, never alone. And just when we feel like giving up, you know, that's when we're closest to our breakthrough. Regardless of the timing, God has made a promise to you and he is not a man that he shall lie. He will not break his promise and this you can count on, and this God guarantees that He will bring you the strength, the encouragement, and ultimately the victory that your heart is longing after and the love that will fill you to overflowing. Open your heart now. Let God embrace you. Let Him touch you. Let Him love you and let him do what only he can do that will turn
turn you in the right direction and bring you across the finish line, rejoicing and shouting the victory. Lord, we thank you now for the power of your spirit. Do it, Father. Do it for each and every one. Cause darkness to flee and let your light shine and bring great encouragement and supernatural strength. In Jesus' name, bring your miracle, Lord, to those hearts and lives, we pray. Amen. God bless you.